guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm in New York right now. I'm currently staying at my sister's place. So that's why my background is a little bit different. Nonetheless, I'm here and I'm here to talk to you today about medical scribing. And I'm really excited because this was actually my favorite patient care experience that I had during undergrad. And for those of you who don't know, I worked as a CNA for several years and that was a humbling, challenging, really rewarding experience in its own way, which I can talk to you guys about a different time because I think that there are definitely benefits of being a CNA. Um, I also worked as, an MA, but I did so as a volunteer in Mexico. And that's where I was triaging patients, being the first stop for patients who came into the clinic. So that's where I worked as a medical assistant. And then I worked as a scribe. Those are my three healthcare slash patient care experiences that I had before I went to PA school. And working as a CNA and volunteering as an MA were incredible experiences. And I 100% recommend going for those if you have the time. Generally speaking, those do require certifications. I was certified in both CNA and MA, and each of those processes do take up time, but I can speak on those two experiences separately because I think that there are definite benefits to being both a CNA and an MA, and they're both considered direct patient care experiences, which if you are planning on becoming a PA, you do need to know that you can handle having that patient contact. And you know, CNA is you're helping patients with their ADLs, you're helping them shower, you're helping them clean themselves up if they're incontinent, you're, it's, it's humbling. Again, I could talk about that all day I can do it a different time because that's not what this video is about but I do think there's certainly benefits of knowing that you're capable of doing that and that's something that you are willing to do because as a PA you're going to have direct patient care you're going to be touching the patients and knowing that you can handle that is important nonetheless that's not what this video is about this video is all about medical scribing so first I'm going to go into why I decided to be a medical scribe what is needed to become a medical scribe what the training entails what the day in a life of scribe would look like and then I'm going to go into different pros and cons of being a medical scribe so without further ado let's get into it the first thing that I get asked all the time is whether or not scribing counts towards patient care experience hours or healthcare experience hours. And the truth is, unfortunately, not all schools count scribing as valid healthcare experience hours. And so what I recommend doing is looking on the school site to see if they count it as valid healthcare hours. If they don't have it listed on their website, then contact that school directly and see if they count it as healthcare hours. Fortunately, more and more schools are accepting it as valid healthcare experience hours because they're realizing that it is actually advantageous to be a medical scribe prior to PA school. And there's certain benefits associated with being a medical scribe before actually being admitted to a program. But there are schools that don't count it as valid healthcare experience prior to applying. So you just wanna kind of vet that out and make sure that the school that you really wanna to go to does count it as such. So I decided to pursue a job as a medical scribe because I had had experience with direct patient care as a CNA and an MA. So I had experience with a lot of clinical skills and hands-on stuff. But but as a CNA and as an MA, you don't have the opportunity to really get a bird's eye view of things like medical decision-making processes or of witnessing different patient provider interactions, things like that. And I really wanted to get into the hospital setting and get that experience because as a CNA, you can work in a hospital setting and as an MA, you can work in different medical settings as well. But I had not had experience in the hospital up until the point of which I worked as a medical scribe. So that was a huge huge incentive for me is to get into the emergency department, get into a specialty of interest to me, get into something that would be challenging and different from what I had already done. So that's one tip that I have for those of you who are in the process of gaining hours is figure out ways that you can really diversify your experience and get immersed in different settings because long-term care is obviously very, very different from emergency medicine. And I learned a lot from each different setting. So even if you have 5,000 hours as an MA in dermatology, for example, I don't recommend leaning on that. I recommend challenging yourself and working in a different specialty or, or in a different setting and getting immersed in various different specialties and environments. To be a medical scribe, there's not much that is required. That's one of the benefits of being a scribe. You don't have to have any prior experience as a scribe or in medicine necessarily. That's one good thing. If you have taken a med term class or if you've worked as an MA or a CNA or an EMT or anything like that, it will probably help you get the job and acclimate to the job better, but it's not required. 
the training for Scribe America, at least, is pretty intensive. <laughs> From what I can remember, before the interview, they actually give you a packet, and in this packet has a series of medical terms. So you wanna study that list because you will be quizzed in your interview. It's not super involved. They're not meant to trick you. It's just, did they study? Are they showing initiative? Are they showing interest in getting involved and learning and all of that? So for the interview, be prepared to answer one of those questions. After the interview, then you have training and the training is all online. It's all paid. At least it was at the time in which I underwent training. So it's about, I want to say two to three weeks of online training. I could be wrong about the dates, so don't quote me. The courses are live. So the teacher is live just online. So you can ask questions. It's very collaborative in that sense. And then after you're done with your different courses, you have quizzes and you have to maintain a grade of 80% or higher, I believe, in order to move forward with the training process. Then you take a final exam in this final exam and is relevant to obviously the courses that you had learned from. So the course manual, I believe, went through things like medical terminology, but also emergency medicine and how that's applied. So so the training involved learning about what it what is included in a medical document and a medical note. And that is all broken up into sections. So you learn about the history of present illness and what's involved in writing a really solid HPI. You learned about the review of systems, what different physical exam findings mean, what different physical exam examinations are, like the Babinski and things like that. You learn about what a Murphy sign is and when one would be performed, things like that. So you learn a lot of clinical things, physical exam findings, what they mean. You learn a bit of all of that stuff. You learn about when different lab and imaging would be ordered and what certain findings mean or are likely to mean. Uh, it just gives you a general overview of emergency medicine. So when you go, you're not completely lost. You have sort of like an idea of what's going on. The final exam includes all of this information and it, and it has a medical terminology component to it, but it also has another component whereby you would be asked something of the nature of, if you have a positive D-dimer, then what test would be ordered in order to rule out pulmonary embolism? Things like that. The training's slightly vigorous, but it's all very interesting. I really loved the training process. It made me feel like they were really investing their time into me because they're teaching me all this stuff that I need in order to be a successful scribe in the emergency department. Once you pass your final exam, then you go into the floor training. And that includes five shifts where you're working alongside or the person training you. And you have five shifts where you follow them along with the physician. You get a sense of what the flow is like and how to use the EMR system and how to properly document because each each hospital has a different EMR system. And so you learn how to work within the one that you have located at your hospital. So the first of the five days, you pretty much just observe, and then you slowly start taking over and writing your own medical notes. And the idea is that by the fifth day, you're working very much so independently. So it's a steep learning curve. You have to be really quick. You have to be able to adjust. You have to learn to manage your time well because the emergency department can get pretty crazy. It's a steep learning curve, but it's a lot of fun. So that's an overview of the training process. Each emergency department is slightly different from others. So the one that I worked at was smaller and we worked with about six different physicians. I didn't work with any PAs or any MPs or any other providers. It was strictly MD, DOs at my hospital. So when I went into work, basically I would go in, the shift times varied, but it was just you and the physician the entire time. The doctor would go into the rooms, ask the patient their chief complaint, what brought them into the ED, and then ask them certain elements of the HPI. Like if they came in with abdominal pain, then the doctor would ask them how long they've had the pain. What type of pain is it? Is it sharp? Is it dull? Is it constant? Does it kind of come and go? Did you eat anything beforehand to kind of make the pain present itself? Have you had this pain before? Different things like that. So you would take notes of the pertinent information. So when I say pertinent, I mean those elements of the HPI that are relevant, that involve the patient's abdominal pain. You kind of learn what to listen for and what it's not super important and from there the the doctor will perform a physical examination and they'll dictate their findings to you and then from there 
Some doctors might tell you the labs that they're gonna order, other ones just order it and then, you know, that's it, they don't tell you. Other ones want you to remind them of orders that they wanted to, to put out for patients. It really depends, each physician's so different. Other components of the medical chart that you might be responsible for, just depending on which provider you're working for, is importing in all of the lab results, all of the imaging results, things of that nature. Entering in the EKG results, they'll give you an interpretation and then you just place it into the chart for them and then the medical decision making. Some of the physicians do this on their own. Uh, other doctors will come up to you and they'll tell you what exactly to put into the medical decision making component of the chart. And then from there, you would do the disposition for them. So if they wanna admit the patient, you would make a note of that in their chart that they were admitted and where they were admitted specifically. If they were discharged, then you would write that they were discharged and then include follow-up instructions. And then you would print the discharge instructions for the patient. So you're really seeing the patient from the moment that they come into the emergency department until the moment that they leave or are admitted into the hospital. You are exposed to so much in the emergency department. There's so many different things that you see, so many different conditions, so many different chief complaints. I loved that aspect of it. I loved working with a bunch of different providers. You really see their different approaches to patients, their different bedside manners. So those are some definite perks. Other things that I really loved about being a scribe is that the hours in the emergency department are so forgiving because I was taking full-time classes when I was a scribe. So I would take classes during the day and then I would work overnight or I would work, you know, late nights or weekends and I would still be able to accumulate those patient care hours as described despite my heavy academic load. So those are definite perks of being a scribe. Other benefits of being a scribe is that you can work in different hospitals. So Scribe America will reach out to scribes of specific emergency departments if they work in certain locations and they'll give opportunities to work at other hospitals or even in other clinical settings. Other things that I really liked about working with Scribe America, worked as an emergency medicine and scribe for about two years. And so when I got into the first year, I was able to train scribes who are being new newly hired. And so that was an awesome opportunity, a good leadership position that I could have touched on in my interviews or on my CASP applications. So you do have those opportunities available. Other pros is that you really form a great rapport with the providers. And keep in mind that every doctor is different. Some doctors really don't talk to scribes at all. You're just doing your job. They don't want to even like acknowledge you and that's fine and that's just how they work and how they operate but other providers really rely on you and they appreciate that you're there and that you're helping them see more patients because if they don't have you then they're going to spend a lot of their time time charting and if you especially if they're older physicians they don't really know how to work the emr as well as you do so i had a lot of physicians who would ask me how to do certain things and with that comes the opportunity to learn and to grow so an example of this for me was that i was working a lot of overnights when i was was an undergrad student. And one physician in particular worked overnights pretty much Wednesday to Sunday, I think. Because we worked so many overnights together, I really got accustomed to his particular preferences as far as how he wants the charts to go, things like that. And during downtime, I can ask him questions about you know, certain lab results that came back or why a patient was a cer experiencing a certain symptom based on their chief complaint, how those two things tied together. And I would go home and learn so much and be even more excited to become a provider and even more excited to pursue my career as a PA. And if you have the right physician, then they're happy to teach you things. And that particular physician actually wrote a letter of recommendation for me, which is another huge benefit of working alongside providers, is if they're relying on you and you work hard and they see that you work hard, they will write a letter of recommendation for you and be supportive of your endeavors to pursue a career in medicine. And so that is a huge benefit of working in a hospital setting alongside providers. Other benefits include being able to put into context your previous coursework of anatomy, physiology, things of that nature. So being able to see how those concepts that were taught in those courses are applied in the real world is really enlightening and exciting and is something that I would not have been able to do as a CNA or an MA, unfortunately, but is something that I was able to do as a scribe. Another thing I really liked about being a medical scribe is that I was like a fly on the wall as far as watching how 
the emergency department team collaborates with one another. You get to see how they all interact in the emergency department in order to provide the best care possible for each patient. And that is something that I would not, that I did not get with any of the other experiences that I had. For my friends who were scribes that are currently in PA school, they did note that of course they'd performed better in their emergency medicine rotation and on those exams. And they had different advantages when it came to didactic year because they had learned about different pathologies and different physiological processes that they might've looked up after a long day in the emergency department. And so there's definite advantages there. And you know, of course you have your advantages with all different types of patient care experience and you bring those to the table and you're able to apply those when you're actually in PA school. I think that there was a lot that I learned in scribing about even you know physical exam findings and how to perform assessments. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how my experience scribing is going to transition when I'm actually in didactic year, because I think it will transition quite well. There's no direct patient care with medical scribing. Effectively, you are just fly on the wall, almost like a shadow, like you don't touch the patient or anything like that. And there's no room for, for that. It's just not within a scribe scope of practice. We don't touch the patient whatsoever. Sometimes a physician would ask me to go in and, and talk to the patient about their social history. So ask them if they were a smoker, if they have a family history of anything uh, or anything like that. Or if they had a follow-up question that they forgot to ask, they would have me run in and ask the patient on behalf of the physician, but that was the fullest extent of my interactions with the patients directly. That's one drawback of being a scribe. So as a scribe, you really don't get too many breaks, if any at all, because most of the time emergency medicine physicians really don't get a break. Some of them take a little bit of a break to go eat something or grab a coffee, but for the most part, they're pretty much in there the entire time. As a scribe, you can take a break. Most of them will tell you that you can go get something to eat or take a minute, but I really didn't take a break very often. I really wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing anything, first of all. I also did not want to you fall behind on my charting. Keep that in mind that as a scribe, you don't get regular breaks. They're very sporadic or they might not even happen at all necessarily. You might be staying late as well. So some of the physicians ran late. The days go by quick, so I will say that. I never was like looking at the clock waiting to leave. I found more often than not that the time just flew by. And so that was really, really awesome. So this could be considered a con for some people, other people it might not be such a big deal, but it's basically just you and the physician. So you don't have the person who trained you or any other medical scribe that's there with you, generally speaking. So if something goes wrong or something's not working, like if the printer's not working and you're trying to print discharge instructions or your computer keeps logging you off for some reason, it's really up to you to troubleshoot it. So you have to call IT specifically or use a different printer or whatever the situation is. So if something comes up, then it's up to you to kind of navigate it and figure out how to find a solution for that without interfering with the physician's flow and without inconveniencing the physician because you wanna just figure it out by yourself and not have it disrupt your workflow whatsoever. That's just a general overview of my experience scribe. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you have any questions whatsoever, whether it be about being a medical scribe or anything else involving the pre-PA process, feel free to reach out to me and DM me on Instagram and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you did find this video helpful, I do make a video once a week, so feel free to subscribe. And aside from that, keep working hard out there, you guys, and I will see you in the next video.